Extinctions is a book about family and about ideas. It is, I suppose, an attempt to bring together many different strands of my life. Extinctions is a book also about endings and about facing up to death and whether at the end of our lives we can actually address some of the things that we have done and caused. So the novel in a sense is a magical solution which makes it look as if I've always intended to do everything I've done because here it is, it's ended up as a novel. Tales of extinction often begin near the end. The past is invoked. A prior Eden where wildness reigned and the dark earth was rich and generous, the air thick with the beating of feathers. We all know what will happen next. Over the page, just around the corner, is the massacre. After the clubbing and shooting and plucking and boiling, there is a hiatus, a pause that deepens into a permanent silence. Years, decades later, it is seldom more, the silence is remarked and there begins a search for the last ones. Expeditions are dispatched, local knowledge is invoked, and when it is documented that all is gone, all but the odd mute captive, writers are conscripted to pen salutary tales. These remains are gathered up. There follows a mourning of the remnants of the last few metres of a patent cloth that will never be printed again. These last ones are best captured through image, rendered in painting or etching or photograph, an old bird alone in a wire cage in a Midwestern zoo, a single male beast lowing mournfully in a concrete enclosure in Budapest, or through dramatic reenactment, a cumbersome bird beaten to death on an island off the coast of Newfoundland, a quagga brought to its knees on the African plains. Some stories are exemplary, propitious, like the American Martha, the last passenger pigeon, whose centenary is marked in 2014 by the Cincinnati Zoo, where the bird died in a cage she shared with Incas, a Carolina parrot. She too is extinct, but who remembers her? In the end, all is allegory.